So hello everybody and welcome to another 25 days of Tax Writers Challenge. This is for day 11. Now if you're not sure what I'm talking about, make sure you check all the details down below. It's never too late to participate, okay? Now, if you're stuck or you want to know how I solved it, this is the video. Let's get started. Okay, day 11. The question was how many customers have only ordered once? Okay, so placed one order through the lifetime and no more. And uh, we're going to start doing it without DAX and then I'm going to show you three ways to do it with DAX. Just so you can see the different options and what happens when you use different techniques. So, first without DAX as always. The thing that is, one of the reasons why it's good to do it first without DAX is first you can check the results and the other one is that it helps you frame the problem and see what you need to do to create without DAX is what you need to tell DAX to do when doing the calculation. Let me show you. It will make sense once we start working on it. Okay, without DAX. So how many customers? That means that we need to put the customers in there. And I write products, obviously. Customer name, customer name, customer ID. In this case, it doesn't matter. You probably want to use customer ID or being more friendly, I'm using the customer name, but you need to make sure that the customer name is unique, right? So then we we'll say, how many have ordered one? So what we need to have is the order ID, and we need to count how many orders ID. Now, I join the order details and the orders in one, so order ID repeats. So if one customer ordered two products in one order, order ID will show twice. So we need to put a distinct count rather than a count. And then we go to the filter pane and say, okay, is one. So that means how many customers have only one order. And here we have that is just Centro Comercial. What does it say? Moctezuma. I guess it's a Mexican uh, customer had placed only one order. Okay, now, how do we do it with DAX? Let's start. We go to my measures table where I'm putting everything so I have it neatly organized. This is not going to be for anybody. Day uh, 11. And then we're going to start the calculation. Um, one thing or one way that you would probably solve this, um, but it will give you trouble is like this. So we're going to do calculate. Uh, the cal <laughs> calculate and then we are going to do a distinct count of customers because again if the order ID repeats the customer ID will repeat too and then you can put customer ID in the order table you only have customer ID you don't have customer name you have to put customer ID and uh, then we do uh, filter the table oh, wait let's close the um, Parentheses, filter the table. You're going to filter the order table where the distinct count of order ID is one. Right? Have it there. We go and put our, let's copy this and remove that one. So I'm going to put the measure that I just created in here, the 11. And you can see that it actually gives me the correct answer. It's the Centro Comercial Moctezuma. But you can see here that there is no grand total. So if I were to put this into a card, this way that I'm presenting it to you is going to show you blank. So you need to do this grand total thing that I show you on day eight. And it's a pain really. So you probably don't want to do that. So what other way can I calculate this that will give me the correct answer? And we've actually done this before one more time on day eight with another question, but the, the, the solution is always the same. You know, the, the framing of the problem or this type of problem is always the same. So we're going to create a new table and we're going to create the table that we need first and then we do the count. So we're going to do summarize, and then we're summarizing the orders table where we're putting the order customer ID, and then we're doing the count, 
which is a distinct count, right? Distinct count of order ID. And this is basically going to give us the table that we created when we did this manually, right? I'm going now to copy these and on our measure, going to substitute these for the other one. What we're going to do is we're going to count rows on a filter table. The table is the one that we just created. That one, right? And we're going to filter where count And count is this count, nor any other count, is the count of the table, is equal one. And as you can see now, we get the result in a card. It means that it's going to give us a grand total here, which is quite cool. So there's another way, just to just so give you options as to how to calculate this. I think it was Matt Allington that answered this question on the Power BI community. I just want to see you, show you, so you can see how you can, you know, there are a million ways to solve a DAX problem. Then performance is another thing. You take care of that if you need to, otherwise you move on. And this is what he did. I thought it was quite clever, actually. So it goes and calculates the distinct count when it's one. And then if it is one, then you put a one, otherwise you put a zero, and then you do a sum. <laughs> it's actually a quite clever way to solve it, too. So as you can see, I've shown you four ways to do the same thing. And I'm sure that you've come up with other ways. You can post them actually down below so we can see your DAX. That would be quite fun. And um, yeah, as always, are you still with me? So I'm curious. I'm obviously pre-recording this, so <laughs> I don't know if you're going to follow me this far. Are you enjoying it? How many do you have right? What's your DAX? Let me know. Details, details. I want to know everything. And I will see you again tomorrow with day 12.